Wow, folks, that is quite a move in the market today. We got to talk about what just happened here. We got to talk about the Fed. I want to explain what's going to happen next because I think that's what's on a lot of folks' mind is like, how's the way to view this? I mean, when you see a move like we saw today, right? And the Fed make a comment like they made and, uh, you know, specifically, obviously, Jay Powell and you see the NASDAQ go four plus percent. People are like, what in the world? Like, are we going back risk on or stocks about to fly to the moon? Like, 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 like what, what, what is going on here? Okay. And and so I want to kind of explain the, the stair-step process that's about to play out here and um, how this is all going to go. So I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Much love. Thank you for being subscribed to the channel. Um, I mean, it should have been a green day in your portfolio today. I mean, it's pretty extraordinary. If I just look at these stocks that I personally hold, I mean, the moves were ridiculous. Shopify, 10%. Meta, almost 8% today. Tesla, 7.6%. 6, Avant, 7.4%. Qualcomm, massive move. Google, Honest, Palantir, Sky. Skyworks. Even the chef went up today. Do you know how good the market has to be for the chef to go up? Holy smokers, that ain't no dang jokers, okay? It was extraordinary moves out there. Kathy Woodstocks flew to the moon today. It was risk on to the max. I mean, look at the, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Absolutely incredible, right? Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to, and I think this is very important for everybody watching this video, right? Is look at this. You see a stock like Shopify up 10% today. It's a massive move. It's an epic move. They didn't announce earnings. There was no news. It just went up that much, right? But do keep in mind, Shopify is a stock that is now 70% this year. 70% and that's after the 10% move here today, okay? So I think it's just important for context reasons to remember how de how heavily damaged a lot of these companies' stock prices have been. What about this next stock? Let's look at this next stock up here because I think some of you guys might own this one or you'll be buying this one, okay? This one is Meta. Meta up almost 8% today, almost 8%. And still that stock is down 65% year to date. Okay, so when you see moves like this, yes, it's it's fun and it's extraordinary, but don't forget, don't forget how heavily damaged these stocks are, and don't forget if you are a buyer of these stocks and you believe in them for the long term, don't forget that they're still at obviously insane discounts and will be for quite some time, even if this market continues to roar back, which obviously we'll discuss a, a little later on in this video, right? A stock like Nvidia was up over eight percent today. That stock is still down almost forty four percent this year. The moves are extraordinary, okay? Now, in terms of kind of what's going on here with the Fed. So Fed Chair Powell says smaller interest rate hikes could start in December, which honestly should not come as a surprise to anybody. Uh, you know, and I'll discuss that in just a moment here, okay? Uh, Jay Powell uh, confirmed Wednesday that smaller interest rate increases are likely ahead and could start in December. But he cautioned that monetary policy is likely to stay restrictive for some time until real signs of progress emerge on inflation. We will stay the course until the job is done, he said during a speech in uh, Washington, obviously, to here today, okay? Here's the thing. It's extraordinary to see the market make a move like that, right? And you see all these stocks up six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent And you see the NASDAQ up 4 plus percent. You see the Dow up, what was it, close to 800 points today. When, honestly, everybody should have known this. I think everybody had the expectation that the Fed was gonna move probably 50 basis points in uh, December, right? And so Powell basically comes out today, Jerome Powell, and basically confirms what everybody's already been thinking on Wall Street. And stocks go crazy just from the confirmation of, you know, what he said there, right? And that can happen, obviously, in a market where you see a lot of stocks that are heavily, heavily damaged because you get any piece of good news and the market is just ready to roar on any piece of good news, right? And so it's extraordinary. It seems a little silly, right? Everybody already expected this and the market moves up, but just him basically confirming what everybody was thinking makes the algorithms just buy like crazy and just investors in general buy like crazy, okay? Now, what I'm showing you here, I think, is very important. Because this is what is about to happen here with the Fed, okay? And I'm, I'm calling it, you know, take the stairs down, essentially, right? So the first thing they do is they, they come out and they say, you know, we're considering smaller hikes, which is exactly what happened today. That's the start of going down this stair-step process. The next thing will be, and I would say this will probably come in the next, I would say the next three to six months, is they're going to talk about, they're going to consider pausing rate hikes, Okay. Then after that, and this will probably come more toward, uh, uh, probably more toward nine to, uh, probably nine to maybe 15 months if we're lucky, 
and the economy can hold on for that long, which I don't know if it can. We'll have to see, okay? But then what will happen is then they'll start talking about they're considering rate cuts, okay? So it's a stair-step process the Fed kind of goes through here, and this is a first and this is the first step they're taking, okay? And so now these other ones kind of have to play out. But these won't play out until, obviously, inflation numbers continue to come down and come down and come down. Now, you might want to know, where are inflation numbers at right now? Well, basically, uh, this is from Trueflation, which is now, like, my favorite thing to look at in terms of trying to gauge inflation. I think it does a better job, honestly, than, than the government does, just to be quite honest about that. And um, what it's showing is a pretty steep drop off in the rate of inf inflation, right? Obviously, we still got a high number. 6.3% is still a no jokers. That's the bottom line. It's still a very high number. But that is a far cry from, you know, obviously where Trueflation had the true inflation number at like 12%. So basically about half of where we were at just, you know, many, you know, let's call it seven, eight, nine months ago, roughly, right? And so what we're going to likely see with CPI data over the next six months is it continue to come down and come down and come down unless commodities were to go in some sort of crazy bull cycle or something like that. Outside of that scenario, we should see inflation continue to come down and uh, get into ranges that the Fed wants to see. It's still going to have to take a while, right? Because even though we're in the sixes right now, right, the government data is not going to show that for like another month or two from now. And then when we get to the fives and the fours, that's still going to be relatively high. Now, once we get to the fives and the fours, the Fed's going to probably start talking about pausing rate hikes. That's the next step, right? Once we get down to two, three, and especially if unemployment's climbing in a major way at that time, that will be the moment the Fed says, you know what, we're going to start considering considering rate cuts. But that's still, we still got a, we got still got time to play out before that happens. That's not happening tomorrow. There's still time to play out there. Okay. Now I want to show you a few companies that reported earnings here and kind of talk about some numbers that just came out here from a few different stocks and um, show you some price movements. Cause I think what these companies are saying and what's happening here is very important if you're trying to understand where things are going. And then I want to explain, um, you know, what, you know, how to view this market moving forward. Okay. First thing up here, Costco didn't report earnings, but what did just come out here uh, in the past hour or so is basically their sales numbers. Costco stock falls more than 3% after pace of monthly sales slows. E-commerce sales declined 10%. Costco shares dropped after hours. Basically, 7.7% rise ahead in October. Now, 5.7% rise in sales. That's a, that's a substantial difference, right? That's a s clear deceleration in growth rate, right? If they came in at like 7.3% or 7%, no one would have really blinked an eye. But 5.7% from 7.7% is definitely there's some sort of major slowing going on in Costco's business model, right? Costco also reported a double-digit decline in e-commerce sales. That's the scarier thing for Costco, a double-digit decline in e-commerce sales. Okay, once a bright spot for the retailer, Obviously, when people are stocking up on everything, right? Costco said total same-store sales rose 4.3%, but e-commerce sales dropped 10.1%. Now, here's the issue with Costco, right? First off, I love Costco. I, you know, I love Costco stock. I've never owned it, but I will say it's a great company and it's a great stock. But there's some fatal flaws that have transpired now with Costco. And these are going to... Basically, the stock has pulled massive returns from the future away. And this is going to be a stock that, in my opinion, is in a, in a uh, rather lame place for quite some time. Because here's what's happened with Costco. Because they reported such great numbers, especially when, you know, Rona was going on, people were stockpiling toilet paper and paper towels and everything, right? And they had kind of the, let's call it the mid-2020 through, you know, mid-2022, just like ramp in their business, just incredible numbers, right? The stock started to be valued, in my opinion, in silly territory. Costco deserves to trade at maybe a little premium to the market, meaning the stock usually should trade at, you know, 20-ish, maybe a 25P ratio. It's fair. And if that stock was trading there, I would say, okay, it's, it's worth m my time and my investment. It's worth my money, right? But the fact is when it comes to Costco, this stock's been trading at a 40 trailing PE and a th almost a 37 forward PE, okay? Now, if we want to look at history, what we can find is Costco's PE over time is massively lower than where it's been trading at recently, which means there's just way too much hype has gotten into stock. Now you might think hype, that can only be something that comes into tech stocks or stocks that retail investors love or something like that. 
Nope. It can happen to any stock and they can start to be valued in, in my opinion, kind of silly. And that exact, that's exactly what has played out here with Costco, where that company has be, has gotten this, this like hype FOMO cycle around it and started to get valued in a very silly, silly manner where unless they come through with just these shockingly great numbers quarter in and quarter out, the stock is due to fall in, and fall in a pretty substantial way. And it's already been falling, but it's got a long way to go. Because I mean, this is a stock that usually should trade between a 20 and a 30 PE. Remember I talked earlier about 20, maybe 25 PE. Costco has been trading in the 40 range. It's out of control. That's out of control. It's not sustainable for a stock like Costco. No, okay, that's just ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. And think about this for a moment, right? Did Costco have have a much uh, have be in a be in a position right where they had a lot more growth ten years ago or now? I hope everybody says ten years ago, right? Ten years ago, they had an immense amount of growth to grow, it, whether it be online. Their business was untapped online ten years ago, right? They still had so much warehouse expansion ten years ago versus nowadays. So it's not like there's no growth at Costco. There can absolutely be still growth at Costco over time. But when you see companies' numbers not even keeping up with the rate of inflation for a company that sells inflationary goods, that's, that's everything Costco sells is like inflationary goods and they can't even keep up with inflation. There's something going wrong there, right? And I can tell you it's likely that pull forward of just crazy demand of like stockpiling of stuff and uh, in all those sorts of things. And so ultimately, Costco is just... It's gotten to be in a FOMO cycle of its own and just valued in a very silly manner. And therefore, this stock has to, I repeat, has to come down to normal ranges, which is under 30, which is a substantial drop off in the share price from here. Okay. Snowflake. No, when it comes to Snowflake, there's a difference between a Costco and a Snowflake, right? Because Snowflake, everybody in the market already understands that company trades at, and has traded at silly valuations, which we'll run through some numbers here in just a moment, right? Whereas a Costco, people don't usually think about that, right? So Costco's kind of gone under the radar as a FOMO crazy valuation stock. Snowflake, everybody understands that. Here's what's going on with Snowflake. Snowflake fell in extended trading on Wednesday after the company released third quarter results that beat expect, uh, estimates but offered light product revenue guidance. You can't come in with light guidance if you are a company that is has a massive valuation on it. You can't do that. Snowflake said it anticipates product revenue will be between $535 million and $540 million in the fourth quarter, short of the $553 million that was expected by analysts. So, yeah, we got substantial differences here in uh, Snowflake in terms of what analysts were expecting and what the companies expected. And when you are you when you traded at rich valuations, which rich valuation that's 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 uh, conservative for me calling Snowflake that. Uh, let's call it overpriced valuations. Uh, yeah, you better come in and you better just continue to beat every single metric and every single number, or your stock will fall. Right, which is obviously what we see after hours. And this stock has already fallen, obviously quite dramatically. The forward P is ridiculous for the stock, but really how a company like this is, is valued is price to sales ratio. And a price to sales ratio of 26 is insane. Now, it has come down from 124 price to sales ratio, uh, but still it's trading at a 26 price to sales ratio. And for a company like Snowflake, that's just an extremely expensive price for a stock, right? Which means essentially this stock has unfortunately a lot further to fall if the market weakens in any considerable way. And uh, if this company's growth rates are really slowing in a substantial way, because what happens is these companies pull, they pull basically returns from the future. Zoom is a perfect example of this, right? And hopefully Snowflake never uh, has the same fate as Zoom in terms of their business starting to decline, right? But Zoom was a perfect example of a stock that pulled all their returns. But by the time, you know, mid-2020 came around, this stock had pulled all those returns in Zoom. It was trading at ridiculous price to sales ratios, every single metric you could look at with Zoom, right? And so even though their business took off and it went to you know insane levels and some of the fastest growth, way better growth than Snowflake, the most insane growth rates we've almost ever seen with a public company that was kind of a famous company, right? Even though it did that, what were the returns for the stock? Abysmal. If you look at where that stock went from mid-2020 to now, it's, it's awful. It's simply awful. Despite that company's revenue skyrocketing, the profitability skyrocketing, almost everything skyrocketing, getting better for the company, the stock price went 
to the sewer, right? And so that's what can happen with some of these companies. They just get way too much FOMO and hype in them, and they pull returns from future years to now. And then, you know, even if the company executes and gets the numbers, the, the their stock prices don't go anywhere. So, you know, I'm not going to say Snowflake's going to be stuck as a, you know, $100 stock for the next three years, but I, at the same time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. I wouldn't be surprised if it's three years in the future. And the stock still trades roughly around where it trades at just because it's still trading at such a rich valuation. And so even if the company does execute, people just won't respect it because at the end of the day, it's already still trading at such insane valuations, right? So I just think that's something to keep in mind. I think Snowflake's a good business model. I think they got a good company. I think they got impressive growth. But dang, man, they've just pulled, they just pulled a lot from the future when it comes to that stock, right? Now, we got a bigger problem, much bigger problem. And it starts with Salesforce, CRM. This stock's down 7% plus after hours. And CRM, I mean, this stock's trading at 148 after hours. The 52-week low on the stock's 136. And CRM's been one of the companies that has like been the guiding light of this you know, past, let's call it 12 to 13-year bull market we had, right? And now it just seems like one that's just continued to falter and falter. Now, when I first saw the move after hours, I was thinking, what, what happened? They must have had some bad numbers or something, right? Well, no, that's not the reason the stock's down. We'll get into that in just a moment. Because actually, Salesforce's numbers were incredible. Salesforce Wednesday raised its full year outlook for adjusted earnings per share and provided fourth quarter guidance. The customer relations cloud software company now expects adjusted earnings per share between $4.92 to $4.94 compared to prior forecasts of, of $4.71 to $4.73. Okay, first off, for everybody watching this right now, I think this is important for me to say this. That is one of very few companies that has said their, earn, their EPS is going to come in better than analysts had forecast and they had forecast. I can tell you that is not the norm. I mean, almost every single company has either just reiterated guidance or dropped their guidance in terms of EPS. So Salesforce is one of the few companies in the world that's actually done this. I mean, that's impressive, okay? So the fact that this stock's down 7% after hours is very telling considering they came in with that. The company maintained its fiscal year outlook for revenue between $30.9 billion to $31 billion. Salesforce also guided for fourth quarter revenue between $7.93 billion to $8.03 billion, representing between 8 and 10% growth from a year ago. Analysts had expected 8.02. So maybe slight, slight uh, miss maybe on guidance, but that's such a minuscule number. It's basically in line. Adjusted earnings per share for the, for the quarter are expected to be between $1.35 and $1.37. So shocking. Shocking to see the stock down this much. But what happened here is Brett Taylor, who um, basically is kind of like co-CEO of the company, is stepping down. So which means it's only going to be the Mark Benioff show kind of moving forward with Salesforce. And a lot of folks really like Brett Taylor. So, you know, I don't follow the company close enough to try to figure out if there's any sort of drama there between, between Benioff and Taylor, if there was anything like that. Um, I'll have to dig a little deeper there because I, I, I cover Salesforce and kind of like the outside looking in, not like that level of detail of like understanding, oh, they had a disagreement about how the business should be run in the future. People will run with stuff like that though, right? But at the end of the day, like people move on in life. Like some people don't want to keep doing their job. They've been doing, that's just like what happens. Like welcome to being a human in life, right? So anyways, that, that's interesting in, in regards to that, right? No. Some things to remember for everybody watching this video right now that I think are very important. If you believe some of these stocks are going to go up massively over the next, you know, three to five years, right? Don't get so caught up into the specific price you pay for some of these stocks if you believe it's a stock with massive upside. So let's, believe, let's say, you know, based upon the numbers you've run, your projections for revenue, net income, blah, 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 for Meta, you believe that stock's going to $500 over the next five years, right? So does it really matter if you pay $100 or $110 or $120, $130? doesn't really. So you can't get too caught up into this whole, like, stock market up, stock market down thing, because at the end of the day, if you feel like there's massive upside for a stock you're buying, like don't trip over these little price movements because that's all they are in the long run. They're little price movements. If you feel like Palantir is going to $20 a share over the next few years, does it really matter if you pay seven, seven fifty, eight, eight fifty? I mean, obviously we'd all love to pay as little number as possible for any stock, right? But at the end of the day, don't get too caught up into this, like trying to get the perfect penny on these stocks. Because if you're trying to worry about the pennies, then that's it's probably a stock that doesn't have much upside, right? Think about that for a moment, right? Now, also things to remember, rates are still going up, okay? The Fed didn't, you know, by the Fed flipping, they didn't magically say, we're, we're not raising rates. They're still going to raise rates, which means there's still going to be more economic carnage ahead. Something we have to remember, rates will be high for quite a while, right? Until the economy likely really deteriorates in a massive way or inflation comes under 3%, rates are going to stay high 
which also means still more economic carnage, right? And when it comes to big ticket demand, it's still going to get worse before it gets better. So meaning anything that people have to buy in a loan. Okay. So I just want you guys to remember that as well. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Hope you guys got good value out of today's video. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for being subscribed to the channel. Much love and have a great day.